Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Ready to uh, talk about independent pro wrestling. Uh, I hope you guys have been enjoying the interviews lately. I know we've been very interview centric, not so much of the of the other discussion or anything like that. But we'll get our schedules probably after the holiday, I'm sure. Uh, but of course, please check out all the uh, discussion over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, please subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show on Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and of course, Wrestling Mayhem Show has the video versions over on the Facebook page or over on YouTube. Uh, look up Wrestling Mayhem Show on any of those. We've got so many interviews, over 130 uh, of these in the can uh, with wrestlers and people working around independent pro wrestling, so if you guys uh, check it out. Uh, with me today is somebody that I've been trying to track down for a good long time, and we finally got him here on the show. He is Chris Taylor, probably the most metal uh, pro wrestler I know uh, of the Renegade Wrestling Alliance, uh, of course, PWX here in Pittsburgh as well. How you doing? Good, Mr. Sarg. How are you, man? I'm so glad we could work out the technologies to get you on the camera here with us uh, this evening. Well, lucky enough, I was able to work out the technology. This is this is... This is all new to me. <laughs> welcome to a, welcome to a brave new world. Uh, but well, we like to uh, get to know uh, our our guests a little bit first off with uh, a, 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 just a little bit of an idea of how exactly did you get into pro wrestling? What is kind of your earliest memory of pro wrestling? God, I mean, some of my earliest memories of pro wrestling are are uh, you know watching it with my grandfather and my brother in the living room, you know, and. Uh, you know, my brother was a big uh, Hulk Hogan fan, big Junkyard Dog fan, you know, had all the little thumb wrestlers. And, uh, you know, of course, we would always wrestle uh, in the living room and, you know, watch it on Saturday nights and stuff like that. And, like, my, my grandpa would get a real big kick out of us just, you know, wrestling around and acting like, you know, the macho man. And this, those are some of my earliest memories, you know, watching it with my grandpa and my brother. So... Awesome. So how did you go from there? What was the leap from that to, hey, I can get in the ring and maybe do this thing? I was about I was about 15 years old, and uh, I was actually walking home from band practice. Uh, <laughs> my buddies and I had a band, and we had just finished up. And I'm walking past uh, Joe's Arcade, which is an old arcade in Mount Pleasant. And I had my guitar with me. And uh, there was a local professional wrestler at the time in Mount Pleasant known as uh, Dirk Sigler, who's the uh, well-known independent wrestler in the area over the years. And, uh, man, I used to bug the hell out of him, you know, cause I knew who he was, you know, it was Dirk Sigler to me at that time. He was like, you know, God, you know, he was the local wrestler. And, uh, I bugged him for almost a full year every time I'd see him. And, uh, he'd always kind of give me that, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk, we'll talk, you know, kind of cold shoulder, but kind of brush it off. But, one day we were hanging out. So I was hanging out with some mutual friends and uh, he pulled in and he goes, you still interested in wrestling? And I'm like, well, hell yeah, I'm still interested in becoming a wrestler. He goes, I'll pick you up at Tuesday at 7 p.m. And uh, he took me down to the uh, the old sportatorium in McKeesport for uh, a PWX, the Pittsburgh Pro Wrestling Academy, and uh, had a tryout and, you know, had the money saved up and the rest is rest is history. That's awesome. And of course, you, you're definitely a name that that's been through, uh, that's been around a, a good while. I've always heard about uh, since I, I started discovering in, uh, independent wrestling here in Pittsburgh around 2006, uh, uh, and, and finally getting to see you here in RWA PWX, of, of course. Um, so, um, sorry, I'll edit there. My dog was going nuts, and I was like, I thought somebody was here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I heard a knock. Um, all right, bring it back around. I'll remember that. I'll completely remember to edit that too. <laughs> so, uh, so you started with PWX, and PWX is something with a lot of history. In fact, there's a, a big anniversary coming up even uh, this weekend as 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 we're recording this. Twenty two years. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot of history. I mean, when you think of independent professional wrestling in Pittsburgh, I mean PWX is one of the first ones that comes to mind, of course, IWC. But, I mean, you look at the history of PWX, and it's like, you know, independent organizations open and fold every, you know, every year. And uh, PWX has been out for 22 of those. And I'm pretty sure that's got to be like, you know, that's got to rank up there with some of the independents across the nation because, you know, like I said, they open and fold every day. So that's pretty impressive, 22 years. Yeah, even since I, I there's several that have come and gone 
uh, since I've been around. And even though it seems like there's, there's, as we say sometimes on the show, maybe too many wrestling promotions around the Pittsburgh area, uh, you know, there's still those, those mainstays between PWX and IWC. Uh, and that's really cool to see. Um, 22, 22nd anniversary, I think IWC just, just did 15 this year. Uh, yeah, so that really, was. that really shows kind of how, how long, uh, uh, those guys have really been around, uh, with this and a pretty, pretty, pretty big spectacular. It looks like coming up this weekend as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I can't wait for that one. That's going to be a, a fun one. Of course, uh, on that one, you got Justin Idol and myself, uh, taking on the, uh, the Reverend Ronald Hunt and uh, Christian Black for the PWX tag team titles. So, uh, yeah, we got, we got a huge show for that one this weekend. We got the former Misfits, uh, Misfits frontman Michael Graves, uh, Mark Madden is going to be there, WWE Hall of Famer Tully Blanchard. We got a stacked card, man. There's some very exciting matches on that card. You got, of course, Brandon Kay versus Jack Pollock, two of the best wrestlers I've ever been in the ring with, you know, going at it. So it's like a culmination of two years that they've been going, you know, head to head. You got uh, the battle of the the, the young giants, you know, and uh, Gannon Jones Jr. and Duke Davis, two guys that to me I consider to be potential household names in the future. So I mean, you've got you've got a ton of great matches this weekend, and it's going to be a ton of fun. So can't wait. Uh, so you've been with it for for a while. What's it like to be uh, um, kind of part of something that long? God, it's it's kind of surreal at times, you know, because you know I started off as a hundred and thirty five, hundred forty pound, sixteen year old kid trying to, you know, cut his teeth in the business, and all of a sudden, you know, I was just. <laughs> It's just, it's always funny to talk to guys like Justin Idol or, you know, cause, or even someone like Cato who, you know, they remember me as like, you know, the young guy and, you know, the, I was the young guy in the locker room. I was, you know, young Chris Taylor. And then fast forward all of a sudden, 15 and a half years going on 16 in December, you know, years later. And I'm now considered one of the old guys. It's, it's <laughs> surreal to look at, you know, to, to know that you've been at it this long. I think the first time I saw you was the Devil Budokan show, because uh, that, that's oh, the yes. first time I got to see like what the rest of indie wrestling was doing. Uh, and I think you were then managed by Crystal Frost, is it? Yeah. Uh, well, I wasn't managed by her at that time. Uh, we had just actually cut off storyline wise, and she was actually uh, a thorn in my side at that time. So mm. she, uh, I wrestled uh, Jimmy DeMarco on that show, which was a fantastic match. That's one of those matches I look back at and really enjoyed. And of course, she got involved a little bit in it. But uh, yeah, no, that was Devil Budokan show. That was a fun show, man. It was one of the very few times I think you saw uh, Pittsburgh Indie Wrestling united. Certainly, certainly. Um, and, and of course, uh, through the years, you've been part of that. You've been part of uh, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, which I know I get to see you and, and, and film and edit that uh, uh, month to month here um, with uh, Indie Wrestling.us and everything. Um, so what is it like, uh, kind of the dichotomy between the two? I mean, they're definitely uh, um, fairly different. Uh, one's a little bit of the younger promotion. I think, and that's the thing, uh, every promotion in the Pittsburgh, or at least of the, of the big three, you know, has a little bit different to offer, you know, than the other. Um, you know, IWC's obviously got that that super indie, you know, that super indie kind of style. Uh, you know, they bring in a little more, you know, a little more in the way of names uh, than the others. Of course, you got PWX. That's just that old school kind of studio wrestling feel. They give you a lot of young talent because they, they produce a lot of amazing young talent out of the academy. And uh, they give you that TV kind of style uh, of wrestling that you get uh, that, that, that old, old school studio days, you know, and of course you got RWA. That's that, that kind of classic good. They tell really good stories at RWA. And I mean, the, and the one thing about RWA that I love is that the crowds are absolutely into everything. They bite. I mean, they bite on every storyline, every character. They're there to enjoy a show. So RWA kind of offers that that really great storytelling, that good classic, good versus evil kind of kind of classic storytelling. And uh, you know, you can't go wrong with either of the three, to be honest with you. It's it's a great it's a great area for wrestling uh, talent wise. That's awesome. I, I got to bring up because you just shared the other day, Veterans Day, of course, uh, just passed here in the states, and uh, I know you shared your encounter with a uh, with an Armed Forces uh, member <laughs> from Salute the Troops a few years ago. Yes, yes, that was uh, <laughs> that was a cool moment. Uh, you know, Ryan Ryan Mitchell, my my good friend Ryan Mitchell, and I had been at each other's throats for a better part of a year, 
And uh, that match was that whole was coming to a head at the uh, the salute to the troop show. And let's just say that uh, I got a little too cocky with a, a certain vet at the end of that show, and uh, I, he kind of took my skull off. I'm still paying paying for that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It, it, it was a cool different event, of course, for them to do and and kind of try out something different there. Uh, so uh, so uh, we like to uh, kind of end the interview with with a few questions. Uh, 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 first of all, um, what are what are you watching today? Like, kind of what, what's got your interest? In terms of just television, uh, uh, indie wrestling, uh, regular wrestling, like what's what's kind of gotten your attention? I mean, the WWE will always have my attention. You know, a lot of people say it's not what it used to be, and it goes through trends and all that. WWE is still it for me to this day. I still watch it religiously every Monday and every, you know, I guess it's Thursday now. They've moved it from Tuesday to Thursday to Friday. I think it's Thursday again, isn't it? Well, it's back to Tuesday, unfortunately. Yeah, well, it finding, is Tuesday. It is yeah, coming on a little right, bit. See, right on top of where we used to podcast. <laughs> too, too many shots to the head over the years. You know, mm-hmm. I can't even tell you what day it is. But, uh, yeah, WWE still got it for me. You know, I still pay attention to a little bit of ROH here and there. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I watch some Japan stuff whenever I get a chance. Uh, but of course, you know, I'm busy with like, you know, other projects. So, I mean, it, you know, with time permitting, but every Monday and Thursday, it's still done to be for me. Awesome. Awesome. And of course, you know, as long as you've been around, I'm sure you got some good ones here and you can take this, uh, uh however you want to. Uh, but what's the best and worst thing as much as you can say, uh, about, uh, being in indie wrestling. Best thing about an independent wrestling is, is just being in front of that crowd. That is one of the best things that there is, you know, coming through that curtain, that very unique connection that you have with an audience that in many cases you don't get to have in any other form of entertainment, you know, that, that moment where you can connect with an audience member, a a, a small child, you know, or, you know, make their day, make them smile. You know, the great thing is, you know, we all go through trials and tribulations in life and we have all have our good and bad days and to be able to walk through that curtain and to, you know, have someone that's maybe some someone that's struggling with uh, you know health problems or loss of a family member, financial straits, whatever it is, we have you know 10, 15, 20 minutes to go out there and make their day better, make them smile or take their mind off of it. And I think that's one of the greatest things about professional wrestling in general. That's that's why I continue to do it. It's that connection with the audience. And of course, you get to the negative sides of it, and the negative sides of independent wrestling will always be to me, you know politics <laughs> you know what i mean everywhere you go there's politics every promotion there's promotions that don't want you to wrestle for another promotion etc 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 to me it's always bothered me i've never been a guy who's gotten into the politics of it i want to go out there i want to perform and do the best that i can and give you the best that i've got and you know i'm an adult we're all adults i, I don't want to be told where and when i can't wrestle somewhere i just like to go out there and wrestle and, as much as possible and that that's kind of it's kind of a downer when you get into that type of stuff because it's like, come on, man, this is this is it's indie wrestling. None of us are getting rich. Let's have fun. Let's keep each other safe. Yeah, it's, it is unfortunate because it feels like everybody's kind of like like grabbing at scraps when it comes it comes to that, right? Being in in that position. Well, absolutely. And you know, my thing is, you know, the way I always put it is, yeah, I understand. You know, everybody wants their their core stars. Everybody wants their you know their core guys. And, you know, audiences, you know, each and every organization has their their loyal audience, you know, that comes all the time. But I can understand if, you know, to me, I can understand if we're running same day, same town, everyone's drawing eight, eight men, you know, people, everyone's making money and, you know, we're blowing the roofs off the joint and everyone's competing. And at this point, unfortunately, independent wrestling's, you know, a little bit down right now, audience wise. And. You know, everyone's running on different, you know, most people try to run, you know, on opposite days, at least 30, 45 minutes away from each other, you know, so it's not like there's competition per se, you know, everyone's, they got their core audience, they got their people. Um, so to me, it's like, just, just go out there, have fun, protect each other and put on a good show for the, you know, the, the people that pay the ticket. Exactly. Well, Chris Taylor, where can people find you either, either at promotions or, or online? Uh, you can find me on Facebook, uh, www.facebook.com backslash, I guess, Chris Taylor. I don't know. I guess that's what it is. It's my personal well, page. You, so, you, you whatever, got some numbers after that there. Is. <laughs> you got some numbers there in your title there if people are watching the video version of this, but we'll link it. <laughs> uh, of course, you can find me at uh, you know 
PWX Pro Wrestling Express out of uh, out of McKeesport, uh, PWXTV.com, and uh, at RWA Wrestling, RWA, uh, at RWALive.com, I believe so. So those are the places right now that I'm I'm wrestling the most. Uh, I, I haven't really hit the road for a couple of years because I've had some you know ups and downs health wise and some you know other things going on and some other projects that I'm trying to get involved in. So haven't really been traveling as much, but yeah, RWA and uh, PWX are the two places right now that I've I've kind of kind of got myself sitting. And, and, and as far as that goes, uh, you say PWX. Uh, there's there there is TV that they run on their on their website. And there are, uh, I think there are already matches. If not, there are going to be ones of, of uh, you featured over on the RWA uh, YouTube channel as well. So keep an eye on those. So you can check out a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of action if you're not uh, here in uh, the Pittsburgh area. Uh, actually, yeah, I, just, uh, I, I oh, go, go ahead. Oh, so PWX actually, PWX just started a brand new uh, PWX media page on YouTube, and they'll be putting their shows up on uh, on the PWX media page. I think it's PWX Media on YouTube. So they'll be putting like 30, 30 minute shows over the next couple of months. They'll be adding a lot of content. So they're trying to get themselves out there. And that's a really cool, cool way of doing it. Good. Good. Uh, I just, I just came across a couple of things that, that, that are, are worth looking at. Cause I remember your uh, shot, the promos with you of uh, uh, the first salute. The troops are on there, uh, yes. which were very, very interesting. Uh, and uh, you guys did a press conference and everything back then. Oh wow! I got oh, yeah. found the press conference too. <laughs> yeah, that was that was cool. That was a different experience, you know, because you got some of the the local news in there, and you know, I think WTAE was there, and mm-hmm. they they did the whole thing. They they recorded the whole thing. That was just cool because you know to to us that was a big deal, you know, to 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 be able to put on a show, you know, kind of giving our thanks to the military because you know WWE does it. They do you know the salute to the troops and all that's uh, tribute to the troops actually. And uh, it's really cool to be able to do it on our level because, you know, whereas the WWE is able to do it on the big level, there's still smaller scale events you can put on to give that thanks to the men and women who serve and to kind of, you know, raise some money for certain, uh, you know, certain projects and certain uh, charities. And that was really cool because, you know, you don't see that on on the independents very often, um, something of that scale. And that was just really neat to be a part of, you know, of course, they pushed the whole Myself and Ryan Mitchell is the main event, and uh, him being, of course, a, a former uh, veteran, of course, now he's back in the military. Uh, that was just a really, really cool and very special experience. It was, it was humbling, and it was, it was an honor to to be part of two of those. The other thing I just came across, and 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 I didn't, I forgot that you were part of this. Um, there's a tag team match on RWA's page of you uh, team with Jason Cage against Ash Amherst. And a uh, young Sterling James Keenan, now known as Corey yes. Graves, on Monday Night Raw of all things. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was a cool little match. I, I, I kind of, I think I remember it. I mean, there's been so many over the years. I mean, like I said, I forget, I forget my own name half the days, but I, I, I do remember that match. Of course, Ashton is a very good friend of mine, and uh, Sterling and I, you know, kind of, kind of, were youngsters, kind of came up through the business together, and. Uh, Sterling and I were actually pretty tight for quite some time. Still, still text each other back and forth, little you know here and there, just to say hello. But uh, that was a cool little match. You know, it was a lot of fun. Uh, just working with those guys is always great, and of course, you know they're they're always a blast to work with. So that gymnasium looks so much cleaner back then. That was <laughs> definitely was. Oh uh, boy, uh, but go check those out. RWA's YouTube page, and like you said, the uh, PWX Media one as well. I'm gonna check it out and see what they're doing too. I'm always interested to see, see how different promotions are kind of uh, uh, leveraging this stuff, and you know, as we're trying to figure out ourselves too, and have a lot of fun with that. And of course, IndieWrestling.us, there's a lot of stuff on there too. So, uh, <clears throat> thank you so much, Chris Taylor, for joining us. Check him out at all the stuff. Um, and maybe we'll get him on the Wrestling Mayhem show to talk some uh, WWE with us as well in the near future. Uh, so we actually have, uh, actually, as of this recording, uh, we're, we we have your your upcoming opponent, the Rev, uh, on this week's episode. Which will be in the past for you guys listening to this later, I guess. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to it, man. We got some, uh, got some very exciting stuff coming up, man. Rev's a, Rev's a good young talent, very, very, very talented young man. I, I of course, you know, for kayfabe purposes, but uh, now he's a talented, uh, talented young cat, man. And uh, I, I remember he's one of the guys that when I walked, you know, kind of came back to PWX recently. I looked at him because I'm a, I'm a character guy, you know what I mean? And I love a good character, a good strong gimmick. 
And uh, I, I saw some of the stuff he was doing, and I, I just I fell in love with it. And I'm like, I got to work with this guy. He's a guy that I think I could, you know, obviously I could help, you know, kind of elevate, you know, and help bring him along, you know, teach him some things. And, and of course, you know, working with someone like that who's just got – he's got natural skill. You know, he's got – He's kind of got all the tools naturally, and I kind of I can't. I love working with the guy, and I can't wait to be doing some uh, have some stuff coming up with him. And uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. He's he's a talented cat, so awesome. Thanks so much, and of course, check out all the other indie wrestling stuff going on um, in all the promotions and indie wrestling. Us sign up for the newsletter, find out about stuff going on in the area and stuff on the Wrestling Mayhem show. And uh, and in the meantime, uh, until next time, support indie wrestling. Sick, 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 you know how I act now If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down Act wow, steady sipping check now The show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com